Welcome to Geek vs. Geek, where we pit our own geeky host against one another to decide the outcome of our question of the week. On my right hand side, we have... I'm Pocky D, and this week I'm defending practical effects. Ooh, ooh spooky. And on my left hand side, we have... I'm Gavin, and I'm going to be taking on the virtual effects. I like virtual effects. This gore battle is going to be interesting. It affects all around, my friends. <laughs> Anyways, so we have Geek vs. Geek, where we put two contestants against each other, and they have one minute intro, one minute of uh, defense, and a th and one minute exit. And a three minute exit. And a three minute extra. The witch would have got that wrong. Yeah, she would have. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start with Pocky here. Pocky, you have exactly one minute. You know what? Practical effects are one of the most masterful things in the world. No matter how old a movie gets, no matter what age it is, even to the, by today's standards, watching a movie from the 30s all the way up to the now, practical effects will hold up. It also causes many times the creative craft of the filmmakers to be creative with their movies and go forward. You know, it's easy to say, hey, we'll fix this in post, or hey, well, it's CGI. But actually taking the time and the effort to make a blood effect or a monster effect or having a creature effect is really important. As an example, Jurassic Park. This movie is old, it's fairly old by some people's standards, but guess what? It still holds up. The dinosaurs look awesome, and, you know, and the other, a lot of the effects still hold up. Why? Because most of it is practical. What little CGI there is, is used very sparingly. But at the end of the day, the T-Rex, the Velociraptors, and a lot of the other monsters seconds. were real. And you can't beat real versus a computer-generated effect. All right, that's a, that's a good intro right there. <laughs> All right, and now we have Gavin, and go ahead and start. I love when we're doing a gore battle, you bring up Jurassic Park like that was the goriest film, because you know, the brontosaurus was totally real, but it still looks really good, right? <laughs> Everyone wants to crap on virtual effects, the digital effects that are created afterwards, but as much as we love practical effects, there's some things you can't do practically. If you have a vision for a movie or a scene, and you have to try to do the practical effects, not only does it become down to a cost factor, but also insurance mitigations. What happens if it doesn't go right, then you gotta redo it all over again. That's a lot of time wasted, whereas in virtual effects, you get exactly what you envision to share with the audiences. How much better can it possibly get? You get right what you want, no mess ups, and if it's done right, you really can't tell. Let's look at things like Cabin in the Woods and a lot of more modern horror films. Honestly, you can't tell the difference. 10 seconds. I'm done. You can, you can spare that 10 seconds, Witch. Oh. <laughs> so we got really good intros here. I do like both of your topics, and so far it's still a little tug of war here. So Pocky, let's go, let's go ahead and hear your uh, battle. And go. You know, it's true. You can get really lazy and do CGI and spend lots and lots of effort. Yes, it, it takes a lot of effort to make those CGI characters. But the problem is, is later on in life, when CGI gets better, you don't look any better. With most practical effects, things still continue to look good. As an example, recently in a movie, uh, they had an entire room spinning. They had the uh, the actors on a lazy Susan in the middle of the thing. They built this entire giant room and it spun. And the sequence actually looks really, really good. In a fairly bad movie, this is actually one of the sound out sequences. When you're also talking about practical effects with guns and gore, nothing looks better than seeing an actual zombie grab onto some you know, human flesh and ripping it apart and grabbing guts and things and ripping them out versus having to wait for a CGI guy while some guy goes thing and does this number. Yeah, you're gonna be cheap and you're gonna be lazy and you're gonna have, th you're gonna have it seconds. really quick, but at the end of the day, nothing beats seeing a human being squish something between their fingers in real time. Yeah, that's a pretty good defense there, Gavin. So, uh, go ahead and start. Oh, it's funny you bring up zombies uh -oh. wanting to pull out their guts <laughs> and stuff because nothing's really terrifying about a very human zombie. But let's look at the zombies from like Game of Thrones, which were mostly virtual effects. Those were terrifying. Those were actually good monster zombies that you can tell. The problem with practical effects is if it's not done right, just like virtual effects, the illusion is broken. I love the fact that you want to bring up, oh, well, they built these sets of things. Yeah, you can do that. But when virtual effects are done right, which is now getting to the point where they are, you don't notice. Let's take the last episode of Game of Thrones with the, the zombie and the thing. 
yeah, there was a lot of green screen on the guy. That's good, good acting. That's a sign of someone who can pull this stuff off. It doesn't have to rely on, oh, well, I've got guts here. They have to Seven rely seconds. on everything else. And at the end product, it is flawlessly beautiful. Wow. <laughs> So both of our hosts right now have really good intros, really good defenses on both your sides. But let's go ahead and get into the little uh, uh, last piece of this. Paki? My last defense of this is yes, you can have lots of CGI and you can make it look really, really good. But that also takes a lot of time. As we know, with Game of Thrones, they actually had to huge, have huge delays. They had to have characters film way ahead of time. For practical effects, many times you just have to put a vest on the guy, have the blood squibs ready to go, press the button, and have to tell the guy where to move. He will feel it, he'll actually react, and the clothing actually moves. Versus most times when you see a gunshot going off on a guy's shirt, the shirt doesn't even move in most cases. It's just like, oh, look at the blood. The shirt doesn't move, nothing looks right, because there's nothing actually going on. Physical effects, even with anything you get down to it, with Night of the Dead, Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, any of the other horror movies, Night of the Nightmare on Elm Street, some of the best stuff was practical effects being done at an incredible level that people were being taught how to do. And with all that taught and how things, filmmakers got creative. They make some of the best movies when they have to be creative with their environments versus having just to kind of rely on a computer that can do it for them. Wow. All right. That's that's a good that's a good exit right there, Pocky. But uh, I think Gavin has is going to go ahead and get with the last words here. That's right. Ready? Tell me when. And go. All right. I'm a fan of practical effects just as much as everybody else. But there's a limitation to what you can and can't do. Film is an art form. There is a director who is painting that canvas, and if you can't get what you need to get across with practical effects, then resort to a, a look and a good team to give you what you want that has a better impact. For instance, I'm gonna go with the Ninja Turtles. I love the original Turtles movie, but I like the CGI ones because when I grew up, that's how I thought Ninja Turtles should move. Things you can't do practical-wise, you can do VFX-wise. And yeah, you wanna bring up squibs, okay? There's a limit to what you can believe in when it's exploding outward instead of inward. So we talk about shirts moving, there's things you have to think about that in digital you can fix you can do and you can expand things out. Practical is very good, but if it calls for it, virtual effects are just Ten as seconds. good when they are done right. You have, oh, I gave you extra 30 seconds, which you can say <laughs> something now. <laughs> All right. Well, I gotta say both of you, you have very good topics here. I mean, you know, I really do like how you can get into the crafting and everything else like that, but, uh, but Gavin is correct. You know, it can get pretty expensive but I do like being on the more of the hands-on and getting in there. And the actually... maker has a hands-on approach? Right. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you got the virtual right here where, yeah, it, there, it's getting to the point where it looks like someone just went up and just did all the makeup. And, you know, there's a lot of good fixer-upsers on that and so forth. I mean, take a look at Golem. I mean, you, when you're watching the movies, it looks real. So I'm gonna say, you know, I'm a huge crafter, which I really enjoy, but I definitely enjoy the virtual realities and everything else like this that you can get into. It's a little, it's very hard for me to go ahead and choose. So tonight's winner, I'm sorry, Pocky, but I'm gonna go with virtual reality. Well, how did the, the maker virtual. pick virtual over practical? Virtual, because- You had this one in the bag. I know, because nobody did. likes CGI. <laughs> But you know what? I really do like how where CGI is going. It's helping a lot of crafters now, making it to where they actually want it to look like. Because when you're crafting, you're making it look all good and such like that. There's a lot of stuff that... Oh, this already looks good. <laughs> there's a, but there's a lot of times where the makeup just... You can't get what you want. Exactly. You can't get the hey, Harley. Practical lost. <laughs> She's <Really>? the... <laughs> Yes, well, we are in virtual simply because you're at the end of the day, it is a canvas. The artist needs to make what they need. Can exactly. I have my drink? But, uh, <laughs> but Harley's going to be mad. But, no, think of this. At the same time, guys, it really does help a whole lot when you can actually fix a lot of things on virtual. And there's a lot of money that she goes might have a knife. the crafting. Anyways, folks, we hope you enjoy our Geek vs. Geek. This if is you a wanna, slasher show. You know that, if right? If you want to say if I'm wrong or if I'm right, go to our website, fanboytv.com, and message right. us. And don't forget to always He's subscribe wrong. to our YouTube channel. Have you seen All right. Stay tuned for our main topic.